So uh, without further ado, I just want to acknowledge that uh, we're located in the Toronto here. And the uh, uh, Toronto is traditional territory of many nations, including the Saga of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat peoples. This Toronto is uh, now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. And we thank Indigenous people who share this land with us and allow us to be here as uninvited guests. The Canadian Music Center was founded in 1959. We were established in the context of violent state policies targeting Indigenous communities, including the Polish Band, City Scoop, and residential schools. These policies were not some part of some dark chapter ended in the past, as injustice against and violence against Indigenous people are ongoing. Acknowledging the land is to acknowledge that the CMC and many legacy arts organizations within Canada have been part of racist policies that they uh, that devalue and seek to erase indigenous cultural expression. We encourage our community members to familiarize themselves with the 94 calls to action that were released in 2015 as part of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's final report. And uh, we also encourage you to see uh, some of the initiatives that the Community Music Center is doing by checking out our web pages on our Accountability for Change Council and our Indigenous Advisory Council. And so without further ado, I would like to invite Amy to present a little bit on a more beautiful journey and uh, how that project came to, to be. Um, thanks, Joseph, and hi, everyone. Um, can you hear me and moving, or am I frozen? Uh, a bit of both. <laughs> you froze for a second, but let's just, I think it's probably okay. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, but someone tell me in the chat if it does freeze. Uh, we have some backup options here. So first off, Joseph, if there, if our guests are all in the room right now, would you mind playing the video um, from YouTube there in the room? I don't really have a way to. We can, but we'll have to quit the Zoom. Okay. Um, okay. So then let's, uh, I guess, let's not worry about that. Um, all right. I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, uh, my screen sharing has been disabled. Could we adjust that, Joseph? We need the host, who's probably Joseph. Do, do, do we want to just, uh, should I just bring it up on my phone? Or? Yeah, sure. Do that. What's the video? How do I find the video? I can just use Joseph, my yeah Joseph would you mind giving me sharing he's in the other room okay um okay so all right I was gonna share okay here we go all right okay I'm going to keep talking unless I hear from you. I'm assuming you can see what I can see. Yeah. So this project, okay, awesome. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I can't hear you very well at all. Um, this project is an augmented reality sound project um, that was developed in coordination with the 100th anniversary of the TTC. Um, it is a, uh, a white label app that was built uh, using the power of the software platform Soundways, which is one of many um, augmented reality spatialized sound uh, platforms. Um, it is the only one that I have found personally that really focuses on composition. It's made by sound artists for sound artists. It's very specifically focused on music and sonic composition. Um, so it's, it's, it has a lot of features and precision that um, other AR audio apps uh, don't necessarily have, the ones that are made for like museum tours or, um, or other purposes. Um, we do have a video that I would be playing, but I fear you won't be able to see it or hear it very well. So um, I'll show you a little bit more about the app. Um, we brought on over 30 artists, ensembles, and organizations across the city to work on this project. Um, 
for the, pro the project was meant to feature um, different neighborhoods in the city through a sonic lens. So we issued a call. Um, Brody and um, Josh were two of the uh, 30 artists who were selected. Um, each artist proposed a specific piece using a specific framework for a neighborhood of their choice. So we have many different interpretations, some of them personal, some of them historic, some of them communal for a variety of different neighborhoods. Um, most composers chose a neighborhood that they had strong familiarity with, um, uh, often neighborhoods that they lived in presently or um, have lived in or routes that they take daily. So lots of different approaches with genres ranging as widely as you might expect in Toronto um, across the full city. And, and the colors on each of these maps, just to give you a sense of, of the range of uh, transportation modes that we use, uh, the blue is bus, the orange is streetcar, and the, and the purple is um, uh, night bus. And you can see both on the left, on the map on the left, you can see both Kind Mind, Josh's, and uh, Brody's on Ossington's pieces that you'll be able to, uh, that you'll be riding through after this presentation. Um, and a couple other uh, examples. Um, our, again, our range of artists um, was huge. You can check our website um, to look through everyone. And of course, if you download the app, you can experience all of these rides in situ on the streetcar um, or uh, from home, just using, you can, uh, you can toggle, uh, a, you can like navigate around a piece just using the app itself. Um, these three pieces are three pieces that have been added today. Um, well, one of them has been added today, a couple will be added next week. These are pieces from French artists, right? They are presently right now um, live where I am, at, which is at La Station in Paris. Um, and uh, they are going, they are also now, or will soon be live in Toronto. Um, and then some of the AMBJ pieces will be featured in Paris uh, next year. So we're doing a bit of a, a site swap as part of this project. Um, that's our team there. Um, this, this whole production came about because uh, our team wanted to do an independent project around subway stations and original music and, um, I immediately thought of the option of using AR sound. Um, I had experienced the Soundways uh, uh, platform before in Paris. Um, I've worked with Soundways, or I've worked with La Station, who's connected to Soundways a couple of times. Um, and I knew that uh, it could make interesting things happen in terms of site-specific generative work um, in uh, an urban context. So uh, we partnered with them to make this whole thing happen. Um, and today we're going to talk about how it works, hopefully hear from uh, Brody and Josh about the experience um, uh, working with this particular platform. So I'm now going to hand it over to one of the developers on the Soundways team, who is actually sitting right next to me. Um, and this is this is Zach, who's going to speak more about the, the technical elements um, and the, the practice-based elements of, of working with this kind of a medium. Hi everyone, can you can you hear me okay? Yeah, hi Zach. Hi. So uh, I prepared a little uh, video for you, uh, so people can see, can get get a little idea of what the experience is like on Sunways. So I'm going to commend that, and then I'm going to show you some some tips about how how it runs in the background and how we compose music in it. So hopefully this will work. It's not currently running. It's almost running, I promise. Oh. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, all right. Just finding this. Does everybody see it? 
So on the on the on the left you have the, the phone, what it looks like on the phone. And this is actually the app. I just just a screen recording of the app to show you how it works. So it's a GPS based uh, navigation through sounds. So you can do it uh, in real life or from home. So this demo is from home, obviously. And uh, there are several soundtracks available to choose from. And what we call one, one track is actually multiple localized audio contents. So we're gonna pick one to feel how it works. So this is a user moving quite fast. So what we have here is a very simple layout. The, the sound zone were just laid out exactly as the, the transportation track uh, works. So it's this is almost like a basic use of uh, like a playlist like uh, device. So we heard one transition, we're gonna hear another one when you get into the blue zone. And also we can get access to the list of uh, sound zone that are here in case someone's interested. So this one, this one was a very simple one just to explain the con concept and now we're going to move to another track. That makes more use of the different possibilities. So you can see there are different shapes and I, I can also tell you different behaviors for the sound zones. And they're also layered. So you see, so the different shapes, um, uh, you're free to use the shape, of course, but uh, in those, most of the circles are actually localized sound source that behave try, or try to behave exactly as a real sound source would behave, which means if you have headphones, you, you're going to hear it on the left or on the right, depending if it's on your left or your right. And also the sounds are going to be reacting differently to how you enter them and get out uh, the way they are triggered, the way they are loop, the way they continue when you're done. So let's have a look at what they did at the end with their long rectangular shapes. So that composition is a, is a good is a good mix of different uh, different tricks we can use to to make the the composition react to the user's uh, behavior and movement. And now just a final one to see how we can also use images. I'm not going to focus a lot on images, but. There is quite a lot in the interface that you can do to, to illustrate uh, sound elements. So like albums or pictures, slides, etc. Well, that's it for the little demo. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you was the composer side. So uh, what's actually behind the scenes, how composer, uh, can 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 create this content. So I'm going to share my screen again. I'm not good here.
So can you see the interface now? Can everybody see it? There's something called sound zones. Yes. So here we are uh, in the composition I showed you last, uh, the one before last with the different circles. So if we have a look, At this example here, we can see we can see like how it looks in the composer. So this is basically websites when you can define all the parameters. This is actually the position of the users when he he comes into the compositions. So we can just move it away. But what's more interesting are actually the sound zones. So if we look at the sound zones for this particular track. We're gonna first see uh, the one I told you about at the end that plays uh, after we left it. So this last rectangle, and this last rectangle, we, we told it to be what we call a beacon trigger point. So the wording is not always very self-explanatory, but what it means is once you've entered this zone and triggered the audio, it's gonna keep playing until the sound file is finished. And even if you left the area, so it was one way to 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 be able to follow the user with the sound if you want to. But you can change it at any time to a different behavior. Uh, I'm not going to explain them all, but uh, just a couple. So I'm going to go to another sound zone to show you something different. The ah number two. So this one is a circle, and we say is directional panning. Those are the ones we, we started with. They are the one we still use the most because they try to mimic a real sound that would start here in the middle and uh, would expand until it reaches this border. So uh, our sounds have a limit. But inside this area, it behaves should behave as if there is a sound produced in here. So depending on the position you are and the orientation of the phone, you perceive it differently. And they are layered. so. If you layer enough of them, you can create a full soundscape. Well, that's what we hope, at least. Uh, another one that's interesting, it's on the every little here. So this one is a rectangular zone and it's a un unlooped fixed zone. So it plays, it plays only once when you get in and if you exit, it stops and then that's it. So. Uh, when you when you write a composition, it can be very useful to have this kind of tool sometimes to have an event that happens only once, for example. And then finally, page three, we have this Sonic River ambient sound. And this one is a big area. And what we understand when you see that this is maybe the main atmosphere ambient soundtrack for the whole composition. And so it, it plays back uh, with no variation. So it does not react to your position as long as you're inside. There is no notion of dis distance or orientation. And it loops. So as long as you are in this blue rectangle, you're going to hear this track overlaid or mixed uh, with the other tracks. Uh, the composer is quite a complex interface for now. Uh, what we did with AMBJ helped us uh, understand that better and see what we could improve. There is a lot of stuff about description, images, um, even in in the sound zones. So um, yeah, and for us it was uh, so the, the software is now a couple of years old. It has been improved incrementally. Um, usually with one composer at a time or one project at a time. So for us, it was quite new with AMBJ to, to host over 30 composers and interact with them and see how they bring different approaches and also what they struggle with uh, because of the way the software is designed or laid out. So uh, we made some improvement, but there's still a lot to be improved. But I still think it brings... Uh, not maybe a unique perspective, but something that's not very common yet is to try and uh, lay out sounds in space 
and have them react in relation to the body of the use of the, the user and see what a composer can do with that. It's, it's not it's not just making soundtracks and mixed sound. Of course, you can do that. But what can you do when you put sound in a space? How does it resonate with the space or the city or the neighborhood? And what happens to the people who live this experience? This is what we're exploring. And as Annie said, uh, we are really looking at this as a compositional tool more than an immersive uh, device or app or of course it is kind of immersive but we are really focusing on the composition aspects and that's what's driving us in the development to see uh, every time we have a new composer he said oh could i do that because i would like to do that in my music and that's what drives the, the development so far so that's it for my presentation uh, I am open to questions, of course. I think now we may talk to uh, Brody and Josh. Josh. Could you speak a little bit about how, you know, presented with this interface, what what was your sort of approach? What did you what what did you want to accomplish in your pieces and and how were you working with or against the software? <laughs> uh, sort of talk about that that process. Maybe we'll start with Brody. Sure. Uh, yeah, it was all new to me, and uh, I uh, basically my proposal was heavily. Uh, uh, my composition was. It was fairly uh, formalized already in my head before I started working on. It. So I'm ex an example of somebody who maybe uh, I might not be the best example <laughs> because. Um, but, but I found it really easy to uh, work with for sure. And um, I feel like there was a lot to, to learn about how to make, take full advantage of the um, software that, um, that I didn't explore. So um, I don't know, I, I found it easy to, uh, to work with, but um, I don't know that I can speak to many of the nuances of the, the app because uh, basically, um, when I was presented with the idea, um, it did get me excited about thinking about space and time and uh, distances and uh, like um, like location and all these things. Um, but I still had a strong um, idea of my piece already. And so I started out with um, this thing to do with um, uh, distances. It got me thinking about distances, and uh, um, uh, I had a center line being Bloor Street, and thinking about commuters, and so I had kind of like a symmetry thing as well happening with um, with uh, going from north to south, which seemed really satisfying uh, in the concept as well to think about um, getting closer to your destination. So my piece kind of shifted as I got closer to, as you get closer to the, um, to the uh, Ossington station. Um, and then the other thing that I found really fun about it. So basically, like I said, I only really dealt with it in a really, um, um, I guess, less sophisticated way as far as the using all the uh, bells and whistles. But even then, um, the idea that it has to run forward and backward um, was interesting because I had this kind of progression um, that was a bit of a, like you could call it like a harmonic progression um, that uh, I wanted to think about how it would um, um, create resolution or create um, a certain chord sequence that how it would create this effect. But then of course it had to run um, the other way as well, because my sections, I had, uh, I think I had, uh, maybe let's say, um, I, I had layered sections. So I had like, like they're, they're mostly rectangles and I was dealing with one north to south line. And um, so I had to think about the progression as it moved and think about how it could work both ways. And so as I tested it, I realized that um, um, certain harmonic progressions didn't sound as good going one direction as they did going the other way. 
So I ended up changing, I, fe- I, I ended up narrowing down the amount of progressions I used. And uh, I ended up um, doing a kind of symmetrical thing where um, uh, instead of having one kind of like uh, um, long series running from north to south, I, I made, it, made it go to the, to the midpoint and then, then the same progression just reversed. So it's kind of like a mirror thing, but, um, but mostly, yeah, I had sections overlapping. So I had like um, these harmonies that were kind of suspended over each other and they worked, um, they didn't have to be timed exactly to a metronome. So when it moved from section to section, the frequency of what was happening didn't have to sync up with, with the one overlapping the other, which is cool because that was something I was already working on. Like, uh, um, um, and it, I, I feel like that, that didn't matter. Basically, I had a really like um, compositionally technical thing happening, yeah. but it was really happening already in my composition. So how that met, how that was able to plug in with this um, application, with this um, uh, program, it was it was um, it, w- it was an interesting process to to go with the flow and figure out how you know. I feel like I could uh, benefit from do like using it more. I feel like it's uh, something that you can um, um, like. There's a lot. To, of details and like this even just watching but as you're presenting there you know I was like so I had like a fairly like uh, simple application for my piece how I, I don't know that I made full use of all of the bells and whistles like I said but but it was uh, an enjoyable experience and uh, also being that it was in my neighborhood and I was able to uh, present something in a format that was different from saying hey I have a gig at a club or you know um, so it, it, it definitely made me feel a nice connection to, um, the community, like, cause that's where I live and I can tell people that I otherwise wouldn't necessarily drag to one of my gigs to like, you know, um, you know, enjoy riding the DTC. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just the same, same question, you know, how did you, how did you approach this, this, Task and, and how did you interact with the software? Um, I started probably not with having a preformed piece, but I started with the software uh, and then also, uh, yeah, because the with A and B J it was about basically bus lines or streetcar lines, so things were very. As you notice, like linear is with north south, mine was east west. East, west. So uh, during calculations, I had to do the calculations of how long the bus. I mean, you could do it on Google Maps, how long the bus takes to get from point A to B on average. So it was a lot of like, um, like I didn't have a predetermined metronomic thing. It was more like, all right, this is maybe three minutes here. This is maybe three minutes here. Uh, uh, yeah, so that that you know, there's parameters within the there's parameters within the app, but also parameters within what AMBG AMBJ was asking uh, of us uh, to do something very specific with TTC. There's also like noise floor considerations for being on a bus or being on a streetcar, which are like uh, things that when you're composing music, you normally don't uh, take into consideration. Noise floor, you're usually thinking like. Oh yeah, it's going to be quiet. I, uh, so that was a challenge that I, um, I'm sure not even uh, specific to our project. I'm sure many people, even if you're walking through a park, there's inevitably noise in public settings that are going to conflict with working in a geo-positioned app. So that was like, I mean, uh, I definitely started started ambitious and then realized there was a bunch of challenges that maybe took my ambition down a couple of rounds. And uh, so once I kind of sort, not once I kind of sorted, once I sorted out times and lengths and spaces, I broke mine into three different sections. Then I just wrote for, I mean, 
like Brody said, it's personal. Those neighborhoods that we wrote for are very personal. Uh, so I wrote for the, the music for the neighborhood. And that's a, it's a very vague, kind of very personal, subjective way of, of working. And have a, I definitely think like one of my associations with that stretch of road that I wrote for was various levels of density. Like there's some commercial coffee shop areas that are really kind of dense and busy. And then there are other very areas that are very quiet. So density was a little bit of a, Density, yeah, density and noise levels and energy and peacefulness. There's a bunch of parks along my route as well. It's kind of like played into my kind of uh, energy levels as I travel through the thing. But uh, yeah, things were linear and things were very much uh, limited in a good way to very specific lengths and periods of time. It's not like uh, someone could be on foot and just sit in a zone and wander back and forth for you know 12 minutes it's very much like things were moving and maybe you'd stop at a stoplight or a bus stop maybe but you know depending on your route it's a lot of those things get blown by as well so it was there was a challenge and you kind of had to give up the idea that you could have total control over uh, the user's experience uh because of traffic because of stoplights because of uh you know what people, if people use bus stop, people don't use bus stop, you're like, this is going to be imperfect. So you have to kind of live with the, uh, the, uh, you know, it's not, not like doing something at a gallery where everything's super controlled and really, you can really dictate the experience, not necessarily how someone's going to engage with it, but even how your work is going to be presented. There was a, there was things that we, I, I at least I felt like I had to give up in terms of how it's going to get presented, you know, different headphones, for example. It's like, again, if you're in a gallery, everyone's listening on really nice speakers. If you're uh, on someone's phone, someone could be listening to on really nice noise cancelings or like really crappy iPods, whatever sort of like, okay. So there was a, so then breaking down all those limitations and all those things, it's like, okay, what? then to me the question was what what would actually translate and what would actually um uh, yeah translate in, in those settings with those limitations so i asked you know i reached out to one of the mentors allison cameron and we talked a little bit about that and i mean your piece uh made a good job of simplifying yours was two saxophones two saxophones two i have two layers like so i have like sock two two saxophones on one layer and then it was always doubled up then another two saxophones and and one thing I, is that i also found one of my favorite things about it is that my my tracks ended up being really long so i left them really long so if you did get sort of like delayed somewhere you get a totally different experience you'd hear something that yeah. the thing I, I i get the most thrill out of it uh, with it is that is that the piece is different every time because the way that they layer over top of each other, um, they it, they kick in at a different time every time. So the, the, the whole piece is never gonna be the same, right. which uh, that is really exciting to me. Like, um, um, because there's a bit of a um, harmony that happens between the two layers, but they really come in at a different time. And so, yeah, it really, I like the idea that it could be a different, uh, piece every time you know that 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 is a very exciting idea there's almost this opportunity for like video game logic just in the way he's laying it out with all these sounds in different locations like you could really create a sort of composition that has a sort of yeah real like video game logic with easter eggs and hidden things yeah. and secrets yeah. and yeah. all these things it's very exciting I mean, I mean well i mean uh i think the way that amy explained it to us originally or someone explained it maybe it was amy maybe it was uh justin shavison was it was like pokemon uh like pokemon go yeah it was like uh yeah it was a video game on your phone so mm -hmm. very much like the same idea yeah the only thing is with a and bj like even with pokemon go or a video game you're in control of where you are and where you're going. Whereas once you get on a bus, you're not always uh, in control. Uh, but yeah, my piece wasn't, I didn't conceive my, of my 
route as one giant piece. I had multiple pieces, so it was a little bit more playlist, like uh, the gentleman from France was describing in terms of how it can interact. Uh, but yeah, I just focused on what would translate in a setting. And I got, you know, and there were still challenges within that. Like I skewed towards making quiet music. Uh, I didn't have any drums or beats. I was, you know, acoustic instruments playing quietly. It's my aesthetic compositionally a lot in the last period of time. So it's uh, a challenge to like feel mm -hmm. noise floors and a different kind of but yeah, it was really, uh, I enjoy working in situations where there's limits and parameters and, uh, you know, if things are too open-ended and then almost it's an endless ocean of, <laughs> 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 so, uh, that being said, I also do a lot of improvising when things are open-ended, it's an endless <laughs> ocean. But, uh, it, but the limitations of, uh, and I didn't find the app limiting at all, actually, I found the app really easy to engage in it. As someone who like screws around on computers a lot, it, it was very clear. I was like, oh, I wanted to do this. Yeah, that's very obvious. Uh, yeah. This, you know, question, just, this question of timing has come up uh, between the two of you. And it, I, yeah, as I was thinking about it, I mean, the two of you have, have bus routes, which I feel like bus routes are probably the most volatile in, in, in terms mm -hmm. like some like, Contrasted to something like the the Queen's Key streetcar, which which has a dedicated lane, it's, yeah. it's going to be much more predictable. Yeah. Um, yeah, like taking taking your route at, at rush hour versus taking your route in the middle of the day would be a very different experience. Or middle of the night, yeah. Yeah. Well, also, like my route has the stop at the when you get to this when you get to Bloor, yeah. and the bus. If you, a lot of people stay on the bus to go south. And you sit on the bus for a while. It depends really how long. Like some sometimes you sit and wait for a little while, you know. So that's fun to just like. Um, I just made sure there was way more than needed, like on there. But then I I feel like there's some things that are hidden as a result. Right. Like like unless somebody gets stuck at this certain stage, and they're stuck there for an extra ten minutes, no one's going to hear that ten extra ten minutes of music. <laughs> Because it would have triggered the next one, you yeah. know. And there are some good things that happen, in but this. you gotta be okay with them not hearing them. Yeah, 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 I'm okay, but yeah, yeah, and 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 it stays. I like something that stays in that. Uh, um, like it's always changing, even like yeah, depending on the timing of everything. It's like I said, different every time, and it could, like yeah. In a way, it sort of it, it rewards you sitting in traffic. Really. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Unlike, uh, unlike usual. And then, and then, then because my I'll just but then also because my piece really has a lot to do with um, movement uh, at different speeds because it's all about like these different uh, ratios of um, like frequency of yeah of like uh, this phrase that it's all built on one phrase that that happens at different speeds. Um, but the speeds are meant to create this disorienting effect. Like I think about like, if you're looking at a bus passing by, you see like the wheels of the bus seem to indicate one speed. Then the bus seems to be moving like really slow compared to the speed of the wheel, you know, like that is like a frequency, like a ratio. Mm -hmm. So in a way uh, I also, um, and then if you're on the bus looking out at the street, you see a different speed of, 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 of like things happening. And then the fact that you're on the bus waiting to get somewhere, the impatience of like wanting to be somewhere else brings on this whole, so all these things related to uh, um, pacing and uh, movement and uh, they're all, it, it seems all really exciting for, uh, for like a meditation on time or like on, um, on a uh, sense of yeah time or like movement and stuff so that's why um also inside of my piece there's the there's the same thing happening with the different uh times re related to each other creating a disorient so disorienting it's a good good uh way to like uh venue for creating like disorientation you're already traveling you're already um feeling these different times you're also kind of like in one you're also not moving it in, in a way when you're on the bus you're not moving at all you feel like you're not moving at all you're inside of another thing you know 
the same way, you know, you know, yeah, just like, it seems like a great way to open up this whole conversation about time and uh, movement. And then Josh, maybe you can answer this question first, but did you have any contact with people in your communities, people who would, who would take the route and did they, did they let you know if any, if, like if it resonated with the route or, uh, I did not, to be entirely <laughs> honest. I, uh, you know, I promoted it on my social medias. Uh, I also recently moved out of that neighborhood of which I, I wrote it for. Yeah. So, uh, no, I haven't. Did you? I personally experienced yeah. it. I mean, the challenge I, you know, I, I'll full disclosure, I tested it in a car. <laughs> uh, I took my car down the bus line and I rode it. And uh, uh, did you go in those areas you're not supposed to go, like the off, like bus, bus only area? No, no, no. My street, no, my street okay. doesn't have bus only. <laughs> no, I'm doing work here. So but I was, I was like, I was like, I can go on the bus, but it's the middle of COVID. I don't really want to go on the bus. Yeah, I'm just yeah, gonna yeah. test it in my car safely and not get COVID. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So I and my car, I actually was like behind the bus the whole way. So I was like, yeah, no, I'm keeping the yeah. pace. Uh, my experience with it was, uh, yeah, who, and who was who was my IT support at the time was Drew Andrew. Yeah. Um, I mean, I liked it. Mm. I thought like emotionally how I feel about that neighborhood. I thought the music reflected that feeling of that area in the street. You know, there was definitely. You know, and what I was talking about earlier is like, you know, I tested it a couple of times going back and forth and depending on the traffic, depending on the lights, like, oh, that song ended early or that song ended fast. And and, uh, and I was thinking about as those were happening, it's like, okay, how would we solve the problem of a song ending early or a song ending fast? I mean, yours has built in, the fact that you can see yours as one piece and you have built in hierarchies of uh, ratios that would interact in different ways that you know with my piece it wasn't as rhythmically focused so like those hierarchies of i kind of solved that problem i think you know a lot of people i mean when i listen to the the demo uh you know i tried to solve that problem more with textures like textures that i knew could overlap and wouldn't get in the way of each other i put textural things on the tops and bottoms of my tracks knowing that those things would uh much like free jazz improvised music or sound based music, or those things would sit over top of each other and they wouldn't clash. Uh, uh, so that was kind of like uh, my experience with testing it. Uh, yeah, but I didn't reach out to anybody else, to be entirely honest. But uh, nobody, not a lot of people come to my gigs either. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, a couple of the. Um, uh, some friends in the neighborhood checked it out and uh, I just got, you know, uh, as far as comments. Um, That's the most comments from Amy. Yeah, I think I, 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 there's nothing specifically that jumps out uh, as far as that. people. Um, um, I guess, yeah, just they just it's, it was just people that hadn't really heard me play before. So it was just uh, uh, they enjoyed it. But uh, I think it was, uh, um, yeah, I don't have any specific uh, really good feedback. It was like really supportive, um, but um, yeah, nothing, nothing too constructive. I'll, have to, I'll get back. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I'll just hop in real quickly to say that is one of the one of the interesting things about this project is just as someone was saying, it's such it's such a subjective thing to sonically interpret uh, a bus line, and some of the interpretations we got back were like vastly different than what I associate with that line or whatever. And and obviously there's so many different um, sonic approaches you can take to it. Never mind structural approaches some of which were, were referenced. So um, that's that's half the fun is you get to, it is like a video game in which you're experiencing the line and the um, environment in a totally different way through the lens of each individual composer. And, um, and that provides like an overlay to things that might 
it might align with with what like your idea of it or it might uh you know totally be adding something something new or or um working against it in some way even sometimes um so that that was like so much of the fun of this project was in we knew we knew what neighborhood everyone was going to be in but then we really had no idea what to expect going in and there yeah vastly different approaches that that different um, artists took to each uh space within the context of this project like you know everybody has it's not like uh this this call was to a bunch of like film score people this film, this call was a bit a bunch to like from the list that i looked at it was mostly like people who like make records and have their own specific uh artistic practice that is very you know beat makers or jazz musicians or uh you know new music composers. Uh, so like everybody came in with their their uh, their body of work, their identity kind of preformed. So it was always a, going through that. You know, I feel like if it was a bunch of film score people or, and I, and I don't mean, and I mean this like in the other like film score people are like chameleons to me. It's like they really, uh, they really, uh, you know, adapt to, uh, at least from my perspective, how I see that they're trans, 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 trans you know. mm -hmm. anyways. So it, you know, the subjectivity is really much like comes down to the, the people that you hire and what they do well. Like ultimately, when you're writing a piece of music, you want to be like, what is it that I do well and what interests me? It's another variable that you can't ignore. <laughs> So uh, then the, the last question here, now that both of you have um, have done done this and, and worked with this software once, what would you do next time? What would you do differently? Working with this software? Yeah. Uh, or what would you be interested in exploring? Maybe outside the transit oriented? Uh, I, would, I would still be interested in doing like um, geo-specific, like I find the whole idea, right? I, I, you know, I think any composer is interested in a certain amount of control and the aspects of, of losing control of having people ride on a bus. Uh, I would love to, you know, and also like the noise noise floor that you can't control. Those are aspects that like I would love to work in a situation where I had a little bit more control of that. And, you know, like the obvious one is a gallery setting where you could do something similar that is very like I was just at the what's the one in Calgary the uh, temporary gallery. With the, uh, the music center in Calgary. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, isn't that Winsky? No, the, like the big, huge National Music Center. Oh yeah, National. Music. Yeah. And they had some of the VR projects that were motion based. Uh, you know, so they're as interactive, but you know, there's a, there's a certain variables variables that the user is more in control of. But I, I don't want to say I want control as a composer. I would like something that the user has control over. You know, yeah, that 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 sounds interesting. Me, me, I think that uh, that it's the kind of thing where uh, I would, yeah, benefit from um, from spending more time, like uh, uh, like the more you, you did it, like the more you'd have chance to do it, the more you would really uh, learn. It seems like there's a lot that you can do. Um, so the more you get to know the uh, software. Uh, it seems like the limits are pretty, you know, pretty open as far as uh, experiment. It seems really like you could experiment with this stuff and uh, and uh, like discover things as you're doing it. Like it might open up um, possibilities. Like, uh, um, yeah, if I was going to do it again, uh, I might, uh, you know, just because I. I you know, I might be tempted to take a similar approach from the beginning uh, to like my ideas, because I just like my ideas as a composer come from, you know, they don't come from that type of experimentation. But, uh, but I might actually find that there's a lot more, even if I took a similar approach where I already had the composition, that the um, software would have a lot more um, nuance that I could actually explore. Um, but it 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 uh, to me because I was 
um, le I'm less technical. I don't know what the best way to put it is. I I don't enjoy spending time on the computer. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> the less computer time, no. So, but basically, like, um, uh, uh, it 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 allowed me to like just go through and do what I want to do without spending too much time um, exper experimenting. But uh, it also is inviting, it's, it also invites you to do that kind of work, which mm -hmm. if I was going to do it again, I would probably um, try to utilize more of uh, uh, the, the software that's there. But again, um, that's not necessarily my um, interest. So, <laughs> so, you know, uh, um, so I'm a little bit like that. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Sorry, please go ahead. Oh, oh, I was just gonna say, yeah. Um, to echo a point that someone made, um, this project, the way that this project was framed, was about featuring different um music communities and genres in Toronto. It was very music forward, and so we got mostly musicians, like music, like gigging musicians applying who had very specific projects. Um, as opposed to doing more outreach in the, the AR world, in the digital media space. Um, and we probably would have ended up with, with very different products. Uh, I have to say we were like, we were hoping that more musicians would want to exploit the media more and really get into the um, volumetric work. Um, I mean, obviously, ob like both the composers here obviously were thinking about all of the important things, space and um, sonic environmental interaction and speed um, and the variables that they were dealing with around speed, around the, the linear but bi-directional um, uh, quality of like working on a bus line or a streetcar. Um, so that all came up no matter how you approach it, but really when you're working with spatialized sound, when you're working with um, whether it be an augmented reality or VR or anything else, um, it is, it's first of all, it's interactive. So yeah, so you're dealing with these multiple variables um, and it's, it's, uh, it's spatialized. You're working with a different, with different dimensions um, and you're playing with different uh, features than you are when you're writing a piece, uh, you know, in using uh, your regular, like whatever, using uh, Pro Tools or whatever. It's a totally different practice than, um, this is the, the imp an improper use of dimensional, but then two dimensional composition, you know, then it's something that's just like space and that's just uh, time driven. Um, and uh, Zach actually, when he was first explaining the process to me said, used a phrase that I repeated then to every artist, which was, um, this is a process of sculpting space with sound. It is a sculptural, um, uh, architectural process. Um, and so you're you're dealing with a whole, uh, with another type of matter um, in addition to sound. So um, it's definitely something that I think it was Bertie who was saying, like after having finished it, you have all these these other ideas and different ideas of how you would use it. It's, it's because for many people, this was their first time working in this practice. Um, so I'm sure like, yeah, going back to volumetric work in the future, they might like think of all kinds of other ideas. Um, but, but yeah, for a lot of folks, this was their first, like their first time working with it. And if anyone uh, who's watching this, this video is, in, is interested in working in this way, like, I think the best thing you can do is, is get started early because you're only after having finished something going to be aware of of half the things it can do, never mind all of the different ways to approach that process. How does somebody just, you know, like, do you have to, like, how does somebody just, just make a piece like, <clears throat> like, let's say you just wanted to, let's say James wanted to make a piece, you know, uh, like how, did, how does anybody just uh, access the um, Soundways app if they're not part of a, a another organization, or like, how does that how does that work? Do you just like, uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Zach, maybe you can take this one. Sort of. Sure. Uh, do you see my screen? Yeah. I just put there the our website. Uh, 
okay, okay. EU, and there is a, cont a contact form. Whenever you use it, uh, everybody in the, in the team gets your email, and we try to answer, and we give you um, an account to do some some tests. So you can do basic composition and experiment, and and then we see where we go from there. Okay. Cool. So it's open to the public. It's like for independent people to just do do it. They just contact you and they. Sure, we are really trying to get people involved in this, and also trying to to run this not as a business, but a, like to, to make it uh, possible to pay for development and hosting and everything. But uh, first of all, yeah, we, we try to give everybody who wants to try it the possibility to do it. And well, then it really depends on the scale of the project. But uh, we just had a student apply and we sent her uh, login. And cool. That's how we work. Nice. Yeah, I think when uh, Amy and Zach and I were, were discussing this, one of the things we talked about is is perhaps the approach is to you know take have this kind of, uh, I guess not really demo version, but this, this version that you have, but to, to like actually Make it on, uh, online and distribute it. And you, you would like approach a presenter, yeah, just right. like you would you would if you had a you know, yeah, like if you had a gig, yeah, help yeah. so to publicize it or whatever. Yeah, and also to to get the these hosting fees and the, yeah, right, 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 right. Cool. Right? Do we have any other questions from for people in the room? <laughs> do you, uh, Zach, yeah, Amy, do you have any other? Uh, questions or concluding thoughts? Yes, I, I want to say it was very fascinating Fascinating to listen to you, uh, hear how you reacted and related to the constraints as composers. Uh, for us, it was it's all the most exciting thing. This time, I, I could not experiment it directly because you were working with the MBJ team. Um, but it, it, I really am convinced it's so the, the way we we as uh, either listeners or musicians or composer uh, relate to space and time uh, and music is so personal that each composer brings his own questions and issues and how am I gonna address this issue? Uh, and in your case, uh, for us, it was the first time we did it with the transportation network. So Soundways was imagined with the idea of someone freely walking in the street. Okay. And, uh, and so this and realize we have issues because uh, even the notion of starting point doesn't make sense because you can do we can go both ways so we we had to change stuff in order to adapt on the software aspect so there are new questions uh, and also realize the the tools we use change the way we work just as once we had a piano we we started to write music differently so for us before in soundways we only had circles so when you bring rectangles. <laughs> and the network so of course people are going to use rectangles and still uh you found interest in overlaps how how two sounds overlap and for me it's one of the most fascinating things because in this overlap you have accidents you have it, stuff happens and and what we want i i think i'm asking now as a sound engineer which is what i do most that's what i want i want stuff to happen to people <laughs> who come to a venue or who listen to music to happen to them emotionally and 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 to make them react. So even in, in two sounds overlapping, there is some of that. Because you say, so they don't overlap at the same time. One song finishes earlier. So what happens in, in the music and and uh, yeah. And uh, also the, the personal collision to the neighborhood is very interesting to see that also for musician, you have an audience, you have a neighborhood, you have people you want to tell about your music, and this is a way. So this is new. I, I just wrote it down because I said yes. We never talked about that, but there is that this personal, pers personal reality of the music. It, you write music for people, so yeah. <laughs> most most composers do anyway. So some don't care, but <laughs> and uh, also it's it's my conviction, also as a sound engineer, that in real life nobody hears the same thing anyway. Even uh -huh. if we are sitting next to each other in the same venue, the same concert, we don't react to the same thing. We don't, we're not focused on the same thing. Uh, someone's listening to the violin, someone's focused on the bass. And, and so uh, maybe it's not su such a bad thing that, that we have those 
this music in space and nobody's nobody gets to listen to the whole thing anyway <laughs> some so, sometimes people ask but how can i listen to the whole piece i said you just can't i, I mean if someone else did it another way you, you just can't reproduce what the other person did and so it's over just like a concert it's over this mo the moment of magic is over and either you got it or you didn't so the, the poetry of this is, still appeals to me yeah beautiful yeah great so uh just going uh, praying again but thank you all for coming and uh thank you zach and amy for uh for being in from from france it's uh thank you josh and, uh, and brody for, for being here in person and uh we'll have uh this is the last one of these workshops for uh, for this year but we'll have some more in the new year so please stay tuned and and the app is live at least until the end of 2022 so for those of you who are watching this after the fact or beaming in and can't be on this tour right now you can still experience these rides in situ at least until the end of 2022 and possibly longer so go check it out um you can also check it out from home the way that zach was doing but as discussed you're going to be moving at a very different speed and these were tested and written to be experienced at the speed of the streetcar again with all those variables with the the variable of the streetcar at 9 a.m different than 12 p.m and 5 p.m but um but anyway i i am sorry i can't be in toronto to go on this ride with you guys but enjoy the uh the artist led tours today that's great that you that cmc made this possible thank you cmc and joseph thank you yeah. bye, bye.